Hi, this is Stephen Brower from Merritt Valley Community College. This is for CSIT 256, Computer Architecture and Assembly Language. Um, and uh, this video on a portion of Chapter 5 is going to look at uh, read-only memory. Um, so the read-only memory, um, it's a chip that will have on it um, data um, and our programs and it's the, the storage of the data and the programs on this chip, well, it's non-volatile. Um, so uh, when there is no power, the data is um, still there. Um, and so depending on where this ROM chip is, um, you know, as if it's on an expansion card for a peripheral, um, then it might be holding um, data that's needed for that expansion card or even could be programs for the processor that's on that expansion card. Um, um, and, okay, so when the chip is manufactured, so when this read-only chip is written, that's when the data is written onto uh, the chip. So they're done um, simultaneously. Now, um, with the ROM chips, um, um, once the data is written, it cannot change. From uh, the point of view, if you think of like, um, um, let's say, a peripheral manufacturer, if they're um, working on the card that's going to be controlling a peripheral, um, in the testing phase, they actually would have to, or at least at that point in time, so when we only, when we only had ROM, <laughs> um, it would actually have to go and manufacture a chip with the data on it, and let's say it found a byte that was off and it wasn't behaving right, it would have to throw that away. It would have to manufacture a new one with the updated data on it. And um, so for the companies that were trying to make these ROM chips for whatever purposes that they, they were needed, um, that development was a very expensive process because they actually had to go and rebuild, um, I mean, like manufacture a new trip, a new chip with the data that's on. So um, what we're going to see then is we're going to see this evolution um, that read-only memory um, kind of has gone through, and part of the ev of that evolution is from a manufacturing point of view, um, so that the prototypes can go faster. Um, so the first um, development uh, was programmable read-only memory, and so what happened is um, when the chip is made, it's made but without the data. So a manufacturer could make a whole bunch of these um, chips. And then later, using a different device, the data can be written to the uh, this ROM chip, this programmable ROM chip, um, and so the data could be written um, and then used. So it could be after the fact. Um, so for uh, a peripheral company that's making their own uh, ROM chips, um, what they can do is they can have like a supply of blank uh, PROM chips. Um, write data on a one, and let's say it's no good, and realize, oh, they made a mistake, yet yeah, that chip gets thrown out. Then they take the next one, which is already manufactured, and now all they have to do is write the data to it. But the other thing that would allow is for now this peripheral company, this company that's working on a peripheral and is doing the card for their peripheral, they can buy the ROM chips from someone else. So the manufacturer can make these PROM chips that don't have any data on it ship them to whoever needs to then um, create them, then they can go and actually go and, and write uh, their data on there. So, so this way, they didn't actually have to become uh, the manufacturer of the chip as well, just the using of, of it. Of course, you know, different companies, they, they, they focused on different ones. Um, so the next evolution <laughs> is, hey, wouldn't it be great uh, if we could just wipe out and start over again? And so um, EEPROM, erasable programmable read-only memory. Um, and, and so just um, backing up, and I should go back to the beginning again. All this is non-volatile. All this contains data and programs. Um, so the ROM is non-volatile, contains data and programs. Um, the PROM, non-volatile, contains data and programs, but it can be written once. And now we're at this EEPROM. It's non-volatile. It contains data uh, and programs, but it can be rewritten. Uh, multiple times. So there actually is like a little window um, to the chip. And regular light um, doesn't affect it, but um, an intense ultraviolet light 
can wipe out the data that's on uh, uh, the chip. And according to the book, it can take about 20 minutes for that process to wipe out the, the chip take place. Uh, but from a testing point of view, so let's say let's say we're using this um, EEPROM to be our prototype for what a later PROM or ROM is going to be. Well, what we can do is let's say we were testing with or we load the data on it, we test it, realize, oh, we have a byte that, that's off. You can wipe it out, reapply the updated data, test it again and see how it works. And so the same chip, instead of, you know, remember in PROM, you, the data can only be written once. And so if it wasn't good, you throw it away. Here, when you write it, if it's not good, you rewrite it again and again. So from a um, the, the those that are going to be making um, either ROMs or PROMs, those that are going to be making ROMs or PROM chips can use this as a way for the prototyping, um, and that this way they're not throwing out um, chips um, unnecessarily. So the next evolution <laughs> then is um, EE PROM. Uh, and just a reminder, this is all non-volatile, so uh, and it is going to hold data and our programs. Um, and, but if we are thinking about the um, PROM or, or the, the ROM manufacturer point of view, this could be used for prototyping. And um, so it allows the data to be uh, written, but it also allows, instead of having to rewrite um, all the data, and there's back here on PROM, I'm sorry, back here on EEPROM, if we realize we had a bad byte, we actually had to wipe out the chip, which could take about 20 minutes, rewrite uh, the data on, onto the chip, uh, you know, the data and programs on, onto the chip. Um, and, but if only one byte was off, the whole thing would have to be wiped out. Um, here, um, bytes are addressable. And the bytes that we address are the ones that can change. So uh, from a prototyping point of view, if we're writing out onto this EEPROM, and this is going to be the prototype that we're going to use for a ROM or a PROM chip um, later, if we suddenly get to a point where we realize, oh, we have a mistake, all we have to do is change just that one byte. Um, now, writes to this are slow, so um, it wouldn't be used, it wouldn't be practical, but what was used for this um, is that a number of computers use it for the uh, BIOS setting, the basic input-output settings. Uh, for example, um, boot order. Um, and so, you know, when a computer starts, well, if there's an optical disk, it may look at the optical disk to see if there's an operating system and then boot. Um, and then if there's multiple hard drives, it'll maybe start with the C drive um, or, or drive uh, the first physical drive that's there and then look for, for the operating system on that. And if you want to change the boot order, you actually then had to go into the setup of the computer and that had to get saved somewhere. Well, in the old days, that was saved into an EEPROM chip. Um, and with the write being slow, it doesn't matter because it, it's not that often you're going to go in and change the boot order of the computer or any of the basic input output settings. So having it take uh, uh, a little bit longer um, isn't an issue. Um, okay, so let back up once again. So all of these, the four chips that we just took a look at, they're all read-only memory. Um, plain old ROM chips um, can only be written uh, once at the time it's manufactured. Um, programmable read-only memory, PROM chips, um, the writing of the data can take place after manufacture, but the write can only occur once. EEPROM, erasable programmable read-only memory, um, it can be written to multiple times, but what will happen is you have to wipe out the entire uh, chip, all the data off of the chip, in order to rewrite it, and that takes time. Um, and then EEPROM, um, what we can do is we actually then can make changes only at the byte level. So it can be written to multiple times, um, but the writes are, are slow. Um, but at least when we're doing a write, we can choose just to update the byte that we have. So the next evolution out of all of this is flash. Um, so flash memory, now this is non-volatile. Um, it can hold data and or programs. Uh, it can be written to multiple times. Like, and let me just jump back again two slides. So remember EEPROM, 
the entire thing can be wiped out using uh, UV light? Well, flash can be wiped out in a flash. There's a single command that will wipe out all the data that's on um, on the flash. Um, so the from a you know, having to start over again, if you realize you, I click back here again. Here, if you wanted to start over, um, you know, you start off with a clean slate. Well, with Flash, um, there actually is a single command, wipes out all the data in a single Flash. Now, for those of us that use Flash drives or any other um, Flash memory, um, you know, SD cards, et cetera, um, that's not something we want to do. What we do want to do is we do want to change. So like... Now, the EEPROM changes could be done at the byte level. In Flash, it's done at the block level. And it does mean that if we only want to change one byte, we have to change the block that the byte is on. Um, so um, it may not necessarily be ideal if all we're changing is one byte, but it does allow us to um, then instead of having to wipe out the whole thing, it does allow us to um, change on um, part of, of the data. Um, from, from like the chip manufacturer point of view, if they're using the flash memory as the prototype, if they suddenly get to a point and they realize, oh, let's just start over, they can do a flash, wipe out all the data, and then go and write their, their data again. Um, what I'm going to do um, a very bad job doing is explaining how flash memory works. Um, so the idea is that there's sort of this uh, floating gate on top of the transistor, um, and there's a control gate in order for accessing it. Um, if it can um, go through the control gate and get to the underlying uh, piece rate, um, then that's considered being in the one state. If a charge is applied across that control gate, electrons get, oh, Oh, and I just realized, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if a charge is applied across that control gate, um, electrons get trapped. Well, later on, when it's trying to sense that um, uh, the transistor underneath the P-substrate, if the electrons are here, it can't alter it. And if it can't alter it, it's considered the zero state. Um, so when there are electrons trapped in the floating gate, that's the zero state. When there are not electrons trapped in the floating gate, that's considered uh, the one state. Um, one of the things, and I, I, I keep trying to find a little more specifics on it because it's something I'm aware of, um, and I think a lot of flash manufacturers don't necessarily publish it or at least not easily findable, but there's a limit to the maximum number of rights that flash can have. Um, and um, let's just pretend I'm, I'm making up a number. Let's say a thousand uh, writes is the maximum number of writes you can have to the same place in terms of the, of the flash. Well, if you save, um, let's say you have a file and you save it just once a day. Well, it's 365 days a year. Um, and so a thousand would be just shy of three years. Um, so if you're only saving to the file once a day, um, um, you can get three years use out of it. Um, okay. Again, what's the point of all this? <laughs> um, the point of all this is that um, there's the need to have read-only memory on chips so to have data and programs in an unchangeable state. And so a ROM chip will contain just that. Um, ROM in and of itself the data is written when it's manufactured. Um, uh, programmable ROM, it, the manufacturer and the writing take place at different times, but the write can only occur once. Um, EEPROM, um, the uh, data can be written multiple times, but it has to wipe out all the contents using a UV light in order to do that. Um, EEPROM, um, it's byte addressable. And um, so this way, if we only want to update one byte, um, we can choose just to update that one byte. And then Flash um, allows us to wipe out the entire Flash chip in a single Flash. Um, and it also allows us to write just a block uh, at a time 
uh, to the device. Good enough.